Good morning, everyone. It's David Schlotthauer here with another detailed update on Tropical Depression number four slash Debbie. If this becomes a tropical storm by the time this gets released for Saturday, August the 3rd, 2024. So since this video is being recorded overnight, here's a look at the IR satellite imagery just to the west of Cuba here. We have an organizing tropical depression here with a new burst of very deep convection here with cloud tops nearing negative 75 degrees Celsius. We have a lot of banding futures to the north of the system. And right now, this is definitely a consolidated surface low where we do have winds doing this around the low. And we have winds out of the southeast here, winds out of the northwest or northeast on the northwestern side of the um, tropical depression, indicating this is now a much better organized system than just literally 12 hours ago since my last update on tropical depression for slash tropical storm Debbie. Now, when we zoom out here on the water vapor satellite imagery over Cuba, we can see that the system is in a very pristine environment here, a very little environmental wind shear. When I mean by that, we have feathery white spheres expanding in all quadrants of the circulation. So this is a anti-cyclonic environment that the system is underneath right now. And that means all the heat energy generated by these thunderstorms is able to exhaust outward, allowing surface pressures to lower. And that's why we have the deeper convection. So at the moment right now, tropical depression number four is in a very uh, favorable environment, actually, that allows quick um, organization even if we have Cuba in the way and even the island of youth over here. So now the question remains, now that the system might be consolidating further south, when will this turn to the north occur? And everyone's probably asking that in this video. Well, what we have here on the GEFS, this is the ensemble forecast. This is not a deterministic model. So this is the blend of averages. And what we have here, again, more importantly, that plays a big role in the evolution of Tropical Depression 4 down here is this trough of lower pressure in the upper atmosphere. We have winds that are doing this. They're kinking along on the southern side of this. And... The question here is, where will the launching point be if it's over here or if it's up here or if it's further back towards the southwest will really influence how much of a yank this is, the trough up here to the north will have on our depression down here to the south. If the system, now I want to be clear, if the system up here or if the if there's a relocation of the circulation that is just off the coast of cape coral florida and this trough is where it is then it's likely to turn to the north and even exit like this that's some of the scenarios that we still have in today's guidance and i'll show you that here and then if the system is say further southwest where some of the models some of the deterministic models are showing it and this trough is a little faster and might be even a little less sharper then the system could actually be moving more to the northwest at first and then turning northward a lot later and a lot further off the coast of florida so this is still a fragile situation um, possibly a landfall now, potentially over Panama City, Florida, versus areas, say, like, say, um, if you're in Cape Coral, Florida. So we still have a lot of uncertainty in this forecast. And when we go forward here, we can see this trough exits the view before our system is able to reach this point um, in the Gulf of Mexico. And again, the interaction between this trough and this disturbance that we have will be very critical. If this gets here later before the trough is able to exit, uh, um, then it could slow down more significantly and possibly drift in this kind of configuration versus if the system is over here, for an example, like some of the ensembles indicate, then it's going to be moving faster, if that makes sense. All right, and we can see how this kind of evolutes um, on the ensemble forecast on the GEFS on the 500 millibar steering, and that trough 
exits the area and now we have this ridge that tries to build eastward and we again talked about this ridge up here it's trying to buckle and now the alleyway that the system is trying to find could actually kind of get mired shut and that really slows down the system. So unfortunately, uh, we do have a bit better agreement, but not a whole lot. No, that's all I'm gonna say. So now, as far as the uh, mean sea level pressure ensemble member pressure centers are, this is the cloud of possible outcomes on the ensemble. And we can see here that as the system goes to the north here, still painting a picture here over Tampa, Florida. If we actually zoom in, I don't know if this will actually work. If we zoom in, actually that's the closest we could actually do. You can see right here, the system clips or gets on top of Tampa Bay, Florida by Sunday early afternoon on the 4th of August. That's a little over 24 hours from now. And then this could make its way onshore over Panama City, Florida right around some of the cloud of possibilities here indicate either um, Sunday night or even perhaps Monday morning. So we still have some timing differences with this. And now beyond that remains in question. This gets really fat. The cloud of possible outcomes really expands. And you'll see that here on the members um, in a second. And this really just explodes. Uh, we just don't know where this is going to go. Some members have it over here and some members are doing some weird stuff over the golf. And this just kind of does this. It, it moves here and then it just, just confusion is happening. Chaos theory really showing itself here on the GEFS. Here's a look at the European Ensemble, the EPS forecast, the cloud of possible outcomes here, indicating a more um, similar situation with of course more members, all 51 of them detecting this. And we can see again, um, this really spreads out quite decently. Look at that ellipse that I drew up there. So still somewhere over Panama City, Florida, or perhaps the faster members indicating off the coast of the Atlantic um, by Tuesday morning. And when this makes landfall again, would likely be anywhere between Sunday afternoon, all the way perhaps even waiting into Monday early morning or mid-morning somewhere in the big bend of Florida. So now that we talked about that, it's a good idea that we look at our track forecast here on the spaghetti plot. This is on Tropical Depression 4 slash Debbie because I do think Debbie's going to get named here within the next 12 or so hours. And my next update will not be until this afternoon of Saturday. So by the time we do our update, we'll probably be a tropical storm. So that's why I'm putting uh, Depression 4 slash Debbie in my outlook here. And this is what we have on that system. This is a 06Z initialized forecast on the spaghetti plot, indicating still not, can't rule out a, still a possibility outcome of a near miss over Tampa, Florida. Versus uh, if you're now over, say, Panama City, Florida, now there could be a direct hit here, unfortunately. And this is a, historically speaking, this is a really bad area for a tropical storm or hurricane to make landfall. Because you can think about this, there's going to be a lot of storm surge, lots of surf, coastal flooding, lots of freshwater flooding over here. This could be a devastating situation, unfortunately, as this turns right you can see it right here on the spaghetti plot and then worse comes to worse this could stall out off the georgia and south carolina coast and really intensify this would be a really bad situation if this actually comes true another thing that you all are curious about is how strong will tropical depression slash debbie get over the next couple of days and this is really dependent on one how long it spins over the very warm Gulf waters, and two, how will the atmosphere surround or how will it be during the two-day um, stretch journey when Depression 4 slash Debbie moves over the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Right now in today's 06Z initialization from the intensity forecast here from tropicaltidbits.com does indicate that the system is definitely going to become a tropical storm probably within the next 12 hours. 
pretty confident about that. If not, maybe in the next 18 hours, but I think within the next day or so by by tonight, Saturday night that is, I think this will be a tropical storm either way you put it. And then again, how strong will it get here? There are some indications now that because there's more water time, as we showed you on the spaghetti plot, then just say 18 hours ago when this was probably going to be moving on to Florida a little sooner means there's more water time here and this means that the system is probably going to get a little more stronger than what we previously thought which is a very unfortunate situation so in today's intensity forecast on this morning's video now I do predict that this system will reach winds of about 70 miles an hour I am right on top of the NHC forecast on that and you'll see that towards the end of the video with the product discussion of showing you all that 70 mile an hour winds right over the big bend of florida just before landfall hurricane watches are out that's why because we're now expecting near or attaining hurricane force winds at landfall making debbie a very dangerous tropical storm or hurricane at landfall eventually in a couple of days or two so now back to the ensemble forecast really quickly on the uh, on the European really quickly. Not going to spend a whole lot of, lot of time on this. You can still see a lot of uncertainty here. This is pretty well spread apart. Still indicating something in the books, say, of Panama City, Florida versus as far east still as Tampa, Florida. In another words, we're not done yet seeing shifts with this guidance and you cannot stop preparations just because that oh the center is not going to pass over tampa i won't get prepared now that's a very foolish decision to make i would still get prepared just to be safer than to be sorry because we could see this trend back east just like we saw in today's forecast recent models made this go further west this could shift all over the place because the center is not yet well it's defined but it's still becoming more better uh, centered under other vortexes and with land interaction with cuba we can see these vort maxes spin up and it could jostle the system left right slow or fast and so we're not done seeing shifts here in other words here's a look at the gefs ensemble again still that cloud of possible outcomes with all these members one thing's for sure is this will intensify over the eastern Gulf of Mexico within the next couple of days. That is a guarantee at this point, unfortunately, versus our track forecast that remains a bit uncertain. Now that we talked about of all of the model data in this video, let's take a look at the National Hurricane Center here. This just came out. This is the 5 o'clock advisory. By the time this is out, there might be an, another advisory out. I cannot help it but to make a video on this as early as I can. So this is probably going to be out by like five in the morning, which at time the intermediate advisory will be out. And I'm just getting um, you all prepared. This might be balanced up to 35, maybe 40 miles an hour. Hard to say right now they're holding it at 30 miles an hour and a hurricane watch is now issued for the big bin that could get upgraded to a hurricane warning in their next advisory. Keep in mind about that. This makes landfall early Monday morning, perhaps, oh wait, no. Yeah, early Monday morning, and then possibly somewhere on the coast by late morning, somewhere rather, we can see that. Tropical storm warnings are now issued for the entire west coast of Florida, all the way from, say, the Big Bend on Pine Island, further south here towards the Key West area. We're seeing tropical storm watches down there and even now a tropical storm watch over Panama City, Florida. So yeah, this is a very impactful system. All right, let's just be honest here. Even so, yeah, there's no H here. Uh, if you look at the track forecast here, no, there's not explicitly a hurricane technically in the forecast, but that hurricane watch protects this forecast at saying that we could see hurricane conditions, 70, 75 won't make a difference. This is going to be a highly impactful tropical storm with near hurricane force winds sustained with hurricane force wind gusts. So now the earliest reasonable time and chances of tropical storm force winds are Sunday night over the Big Bend of Florida, probably by Sunday morning over Tampa Bay, as well 
as say Cape Coral here, down there uh, further south, possibly by late tonight. Not now. This is being. I'm making this as of three in the morning Pacific Daylight Time Saturday. So this would be Saturday night, not Saturday morning. So don't get confused here. And there's a five to ten versus up here. There's now a seventy percent chance of tropical storm force winds. That definitely has increased since our live update that we did nearly about six or about eight or nine hours ago. Actually, almost twelve hours ago. So how much rainfall is expected? Well, of course, Western Florida going to take the brunt with this because, again, the system is doing this. So, of course, the fat side, the wet side is going to bring most of the rainfall to that area. And what I mean by that, if we go back and look at the GEFS or GFS deterministic forecast and we go back here and let's zoom out really quickly so we can see what we have. So we can see all this green. Yeah, that's a lot of moisture in the deep layers. And when you have a lot of moisture, you get a lot of cloud cover. When you get a lot of cloud cover, you get a lot of rainfall. And that's what is going to be the problem here when we take back and look at our NHC graphics. We can see anywhere between six to eight inches of rain over the western half of Florida, as much as two to four inches over uh, rest of Florida, like Orlando, Miami, getting quite a bit of rainfall. But more, the thing that really sticks out here is the South Carolina coast. Yeah, Charleston, Savannah, Georgia could get up to a foot of rainfall. Perhaps even Charleston could get close to 16 inches of rainfall within this tropical system if it even becomes a hurricane and stalls out here we could see much more significant heavy rainfall than what this is indicating therefore there is now actually because of that there is now a moderate risk of heavy rainfall for jacksonville florida for savannah georgia charleston south carolina now under a moderate risk for heavy rainfall river flooding street flooding, urban flooding, that sort of thing. And you bet there will be tropical storm force winds here. So power outages, down trees, some property damage. You bet this is not a good situation in this morning's update, unfortunately. And then of course, up the coast you go over Richmond, Norfolk, Cape Hatteras, there is a slight risk of heavy rainfall at this given time. So here are the hazards. Let me update this. This is the five o'clock update right now. Heavy rainfall may result in locally considerable flash and urban flooding across portions of Florida and the coastal areas of southeastern U.S. this weekend through Wednesday. Isolated river flooding will also be possible. A hurricane watch has been issued for portions of the west central Florida and the Big Bend region where hurricane conditions are possible late Sunday into early Monday. Tropical storm conditions are expected further south along the Florida's west coast, including Tampa Bay area and across dry Torgas where tropical storm warnings are now in effect. So please, folks, again, yeah, the center will not pass over Tampa Bay at this point, but it does not mean you will not see impacts. Rain, wind do spread well east of the center, especially on the fat side that the system is moving in the direction of. So this is moving to the north. The fat side is the east side of the surface low instead of, well, the west side if this was moving to the south. There's a possibility of life-threatening inundation from storm surge along portions of the west coast of Florida from Bonita Beach to uh, Ocilia River, including Tampa Bay and Charlotte Harbor, where a storm surge watch is now in effect. So you can read about this. Go uh, For more information, you can go visit hurricanes.gov for more info on this system. Here's a look at the storm surge uh, forecast here as of the 5 o'clock advisory. And again, 3 to 5 feet now. That was 2 to 4 feet in yesterday's update. So we have seen an increase and a bump up with the numbers. Tampa Bay, 2 to 4 feet. Charlotte Harbor, 2 to 4 feet. And again, because we might see a stronger system in this portion of the Big Bend area, it won't surprise me if we get um, increasing storm surge forecasts here. Instead of seeing maybe three to five feet, maybe in Saturday evening's update from the NHC, this could get bumped maybe five to seven or five to eight feet. So we could see higher numbers here. And again, that's based on the intensity, the latest forecast from how strong this could actually get. And here's a look at the storm surge forecast really quickly. Areas in yellow, there is Ponca there in, let me make sure, yeah, 
or actually that's Panama. It's hard to see that. Um, but you can see um, uh, three feet or greater of storm surge in areas here in orange. Yeah, that's six feet. Yeah, six feet. That orange area right there. So not a lot of people live over here, but look at down here we go. We got um, some islands over here, uh, Cedar Key, Cedar Key in Florida, looking at uh, six feet um, of storm surge potentially on this. And then here's Tampa Bay. You might see as much as one to three feet of storm surge. So again, no, you're not going to get the center, but you're also not going to avoid, uh, uh, of course, the storm surge, high surf that could reach over uh, 20 or 30 feet with this. So you can look more on the description here of the system, but I'm going to read out a few key points uh, right now. So uh, what we need to really read about here, uh, let me zoom in so you all can see this. So after this system crosses Cuba and emerges over the eastern Gulf of Mexico, the environmental and oceanic conditions appear favorable for intensification. The latest NHC forecast shows the cyclone becoming a tropical storm by tonight, probably even a little sooner than that. There is still some question marks on that, but within about 6 to 12 hours, I think we're going to see this becoming our named our fourth named storm with additional strengthening expected while it moves across deep warm waters in the weak shear environment of the Gulf. We're not going to get into the sea surface temperatures, but I'll tell you there are in the upper 80s to lower 90s right now, which is more than warm enough to support a rapid or a quickly strengthening system. The regional hurricane models and statistical hurricane um, guidance continue to indicate some potential that this system could reach hurricane strength before it makes landfall in the Florida Big Bend region. So that is still being indicated here within the next 40 to 60 hours. So this does have two days, yeah, two days over the Gulf, and weakening is in forecasted after landfall. But again, reintensification is still being explicit in their forecast. And here it is, 70 miles an hour just before landfall. So that might mean maybe 75 right at the contact of landfall within about 48 to 60-ish hours is what we're thinking here. And once this moves back over water, re-strengthening will likely occur, possibly significant strengthening perhaps. Now, with that being said, I really need you all to please get prepared for this system, all right? I, I'm trying to be conservative here, but we may not be as conservative anymore because this system is outpacing our predictions right now. This is further south and it is a little bit more organized than what our global models indicated earlier. And I want to repeat, there is a tropical or there is a hurricane watch up now for the big bend of Florida over here with a tropical storm warning that extends all the way down the east or the west coast of Florida. You need to get pre preparations getting underway right now because this is evolving pretty quickly. But anyways, if you did enjoy this morning's detailed update on, tro uh, on Tropical Depression number 4 slash Tropical Storm Debbie, once it gets named here in the next 12 to 18 hours, please consider subscribing if you haven't already, folks. And hit the bell notification icon to get latest updates. This is another double header. Two updates today here on the channel. I will be going live. I want to remind you all, I'm going live on this system at 5 o'clock Pacific Daylight Time Saturday today. Please make sure you have the bell notification icon turned on so you all get my notifications when I do go live on this discussion and for future updates on this tropical system. But otherwise, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you back here in a little while.